And I know Chastity Snowden will be happy right now because I've been telling her we're going live at eight. And she's I know she's like, <laughs> did they just forget? Well, I had I do a radio show here in Chattanooga uh, called The Intentional Living Project. And interesting enough, Jen Johnston, how are you first? I'm good. Thanks. How are you doing? I'm good. We just did the show. It's called The Intentional Living Project. I'm just the co-host of it. And they have a podcast. But we talked tonight about working out over the age of 50. Okay. Because I'm over 50. And we talked about how the difficulties and how it, it changes and your ego. Because I still want to go in and deadlift and power clean back in the day. I still want to pick the weights up. And I can't do it like that anymore. Yeah. Do you train differently now than, I mean, aside from weight or yeah. completely different? Yeah. Well, so this, this is this. You know how you said the stuff that I was bringing up was timely before yeah. we came on the air. So we're gonna talk yeah. about caffeine. So if you're tuning in, we're gonna be talking about caffeine. I'm gonna ask her some surprise questions about working out. We're gonna talk about coaching uh, and Chastity Snowden at Fearlessly Authentic uh, FLA Movement. Is that the right website? Right. Yep. Yes. FLA Movement dot com. Uh, but we're gonna talk about all that. But it's funny that we you brought you brought that up because yes, my workouts have changed. I actually, when we went into quarantine, had to change the definitions because <clears throat> I'm the kind of guy that has to put something on the calendar. And I was in a group with you. You were the coach. Yep. So I'm the guy that has to mark something on the calendar and then train for that. Well, I don't have anything like that. And since I went into quarantine, I had to go from, in my brain, the words I use, I had to change up. So I just had to say movement and activity. So Sundays, that's me walking for an hour. Some days, that's me going out back and chopping wood for an hour. Some days, that's me lifting weights. Some days, that's me trying to do different things. But me thinking of hardcore working out like I used to, I just can't do it. I can't do pull-ups anymore because of my shoulder. Okay. Uh, I've got an artificial hip and arthritis, so I can't really do the stuff that a, the box jumps that I used to want to do. Uh, but I still do a little bit. I just don't do them as high. So, yeah, it's changed and it kind of sucks. kind of sucks. I feel like that's probably challenging challenging mentally. Cause, but what you said, you just have to, like, redefine what it means to work out. Yes, I had to. Do, and, and until and the, and the other thing about it, because I talk with some other friends of mine that they're, you know, in their 50s. And, and I got a buddy of mine who's in way better shape than I am. And he's in his 60s. But just because that's the way it is now, that doesn't mean that's the way it has to be mm -hmm. forever. <laughs> So yeah. I feel like I'm doing this just to get back because I found myself adding as I go. Like I did, I did up downs the other day. Well, I used to do sets of 50 up downs. Well, the other day I did 10 and literally I thought I would rather just asteroids hit the earth at this point. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? A colonoscopy, anything, root canals. If I do one more burpee, I swear to God, I'd rather just have something decay in my head. Uh but so it's changed. But I thought, well, yeah. if I can do 10, I could probably do 11. I could probably do 12. Hey, and a quick shout out and apology to everybody that sees my 1970s curtains. I had to change my backdrop today. I had to change locations to get closer to my router for internet speed. Uh, so I pulled that up early on a video I was doing. And somebody goes, dude, are you at your mom's house? I'm like, no, I'm in my house, jerk. <laughs> Shut up. My mom's got better taste than that. Thank you very much. Um, but in how you're young though, you're still in your twenties, right? Yeah. Th that came up tonight on the radio show on how we define, how we looked at working out when we were in our twenties and thirties versus now that we're in our mid, you know, fifties or mid fifties. And it's a little, and what the word I use was ego. Mm -hmm. There's a lot of ego. If, if, if you're, if you, it's humbling, I'll put it that way. Yeah. No, I mean, I, I would say that I've, I guess I've always been someone, I mean, I, I know I can test my limits, but I've never been that person that's <clears throat> like, really, I would say like goes for it. You know, I maybe have always been a little cautious is what I'm trying to say. Really? On the workout side? Yeah. And I don't know if that's the same thing as ego or caution, but you know, See, that I, surprises me. I thought you would be the all in I'm, Just, I'm all in to like an extent. <laughs> <laughs> so like I was actually just having this conversation with, um, you know, one of our members at the gym I coach at that, you know, in my entire CrossFit career, which is um, going on eight years now, you know, I've never actually been injured, which 
I mean, sh- that shouldn't be the, that, that should be the norm, you know, it's not, unfortunately, but I would just say in general, in my entire life, aside from rolling my ankle in <clears throat> high school soccer, I've never been injured. So I don't know if that is a testament to me being cautious or I don't know. But how, how important is form to you on stuff? Cause I think a lot of times when I would do powerlifting and stuff, weightlifting, you, I would sacrifice, or I saw other guys too, sacrificing form, not on the stuff they could do easily, but it's on that one last rep or that yeah. I, I'm going to do one more and they don't get their butt down or they look down when they're doing the, and, and next thing you know, you've got a, you've got a, something caught or pulled. Yeah. It's always that last rep. Always. I swear. Yeah. But no, it's, I mean, I would say we have a saying at our gym position before performance. Um, and that's kind of what I've always lived by. It's hard though. Again, they go back to that ego, especially as you get older. And that's what we were talking about tonight on the radio. Whatever weight you could deadlift, you know, I see people deadlifting it now and I go, I could do that. No, you hadn't done that in 20 years, dude. You couldn't do that. And so I'll go and I'll pick up something that's nowhere near that weight. And I'm like, now my back hurts. My hips are tight. You know, it's, it's just, it's silly. It's, but let's, let's do this. Let's jump into the coaching part of this because, um, I want to talk a little bit about coaching, and then I want to talk to you about my one of my favorite words, caffeine. I want to talk about caffeine. Um, you're a coach, yes, and you coach along with Chastity Snowden with Fearlessly Authentic, um, and we're going to talk about group stuff later on before we finish this up. But why do you like coaching, and do you still have a coach yourself? Yes. Um, I love coaching because it allows me to – I mean, well, let me, let me back up here. That would be the second part of it. So why I love coaching first and foremost is because I love having the conversations with people and asking the questions and really almost letting that person come to a conclusion versus me just telling them what to do. Um, I would almost say like over the course of my coaching career, what I enjoy most about coaching has evolved Um, it used to be, you know, being able to educate people and now it's really having the conversation with someone and that goes along with education. Absolutely. But now it's more of a conversation, you know, I'm, I'm really big on that because I'm not always going to be here. And so I want them to be able to come to their own conclusions. Um, and so, I mean, I guess that does go along with being able to educate people. But when you have the knowledge at least because I've helped businesses along the way. That's what I kind of did for a long time. If you have the knowledge and you're a coach, a good coach, you can sprinkle that in the conversation. It doesn't have to be a lecture series. It's asking questions and then inserting it as needed. Yeah. Yeah. So I just, I love when people have those aha moments, you know, all of a sudden we're talking and it's like, Oh, this is what I think you would probably say. And I'm like, yeah. You're, you're probably right. Yeah, but at some point, I, I found, we talked about this word accountability a lot in the group that I was in. A lot of times in life, and I, and this is why I think there's value in what you do, but a lot of times the value comes from, yes, the knowledge, right? Being the good carpenter, knowing where to put the nail, that's super important. Knowing when to cut, knowing when not to cut, you know, that's important. Yeah. There's also something said for you to know the right question to ask to the answer I already know. Yeah. To the just let's cut through the BS. I'm going to ask you the rhetorical question that so tell me, do you think you could get more done if you got up earlier? You you know the answer to it. I yeah. just need somebody that I am either time-wise I'm invested in or financially I'm invested in that's going to ask me the question that makes me accountable to me. Because like you said, you're not always going to be there. Yeah. And eventually they got to hold themselves accountable. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And, you know, to that too, I think part of it is helping people learn and navigate. Like, how do you make the better choice easier? So I actually heard something today that I really liked the idea of that. It's not, it's not complicated, but it's not, it's simple. It's not easy. Right. So like, the solution might be simple, but that doesn't mean it's always easy to implement. That's right. So, you know, trying to figure out, like, like you said, like it might be that rhetorical question, but there's a reason someone's not doing that, you know? So what is it? Well, yes. Getting up early. It's easy. 
Yeah. Just get up early. Yeah. It's, it's, it's simple. I mean, it's simple, but it's really hard. Yeah. If you're not a morning person, but like, and then I, I want to ask you before we get off, cause I was about to jump into caffeine. I'm, I'm, I'm over. I've got that word written down. It's flashing out of my, <laughs> you also have a coach though. Yes. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Um, absolutely. I mean, I think seeing the value in a coach being a coach, you know, I obviously see value in that cause that's what I do for a living. There is immense value in coaches having coaches because, you know, essentially you're, you're always learning, you're always growing. And so, I still learn so much from my coach that it makes me a better coach. Yeah. Yeah. Stay with, stay with me and everybody don't leave. I'm, we're going to, we're going to go, I'm going to refresh this real quick, but you're not going to, I'm not going to lose you. Just stay right there. And if I do, you can click. Right. There we go. You still with me? I'm here. There we go. Okay. Uh, and so that we didn't lose anything. I just needed to refresh because I saw something that was happening over here on my internet issue. Um, and I brought this up when we were, before we came on the air, do you see a difference or do you pick a coach based off what you need physically or mentally, or do you have two separate coaches or do they actually serve the same purpose? You mean for like my personal physical growth yeah. versus my mental growth? Yeah, I mean, do, do you, have you found that your physical coach, the one that trains you on other stuff, are they also kind of your, you know, a, a therapist? Are they? Do they end up helping you on the mental side of things? In other words, do you have a coach to help you with the mental stuff and you got the physical stuff taken? Or do you have a coach on the physical and you just kind of use the physical to help with your mental stuff? Because I think everybody needs help with things at different times. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. And the conversation. So I have one coach. Um, Chastity is actually still my coach. Um, we know her. Yes, we know her. And she, she is very great at addressing both of those things. And it's really about whatever I need at, at the time. So it might change week to week, whether I need help with more of the mental stuff versus more of the physical stuff. Um, I don't think that's necessarily common in every coach. Um, you know, not every coach that n understands the physical aspect understands how to coach the mental side of it. Right. And, you know, Chastity does a really good job of, of both. What do you struggle with the most, though? What do you find that she is helping? I mean, do you have a habit that you're, you know, if there's a habit that's going to go down, do you have your habit that's always a weak link or is it food? What Where's your, if I were to ask Chastity, what does she have to help you with the most? What would mm -hmm. she say? Um... I would say it's something. And she's watching, so you better be honest. <laughs> I would say it's me getting out of my own way. Whether what does that, that mean? Is, you know, it's I have the ability and I know what I need to do, but I will get in my own way sometimes because of, you know, maybe I overthink something or, you know, stress is high or anxiety around something is high. And so if I can address that, then – whatever I'm trying to achieve will happen. Are you an overthinker? Yes. Yeah, I am too. I actually have done a podcast with a friend of mine, a t couple of them about, and I used to call it overthinkers unite because if you seriously, it is a, it can be, if you do not learn how to be functional with it, it can be de debilitating. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, absolutely. So how do you, how do you manage that? Do you take the stress with your, the people you're helping with you, do you pull, are you the type of person that you're an empath where you pull their worries with you? Is, you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Um, I am very much an empath in that, in that sense. It has taken me time um, to not be so, I guess, not to not take that home with me. So right. to um, <clears throat> it's, it's been an evolution. There are still times, of course, when you have, great calls with your clients or, you know, something went really well and then maybe they're struggling. And so you, to extent, do take on those struggles, but it's been a work in progress, I would say. You know, in coaching though, I would think, and I'm glad, you know, I know you and Chastity and you have a community of coaches, Yeah, but it's a, also a very, there's a lot of solitude in it. In other words, I have these great moments. I've got to be up for my clients. I've got to be in the moment. I've got to be super focused. And when I'm done, I'm left by myself. Mm -hmm. And I've got all their baggage. I've got the paperwork and stuff, of course. But there's highs and there's lows. 
And if I don't have a coach to share that with or a CrossFit gym to go burn that out, I can imagine your boyfriend might be sitting across the table from you sometimes going, yeah, that's great. Yeah, that's awesome. <laughs> Look, you're giggling. It happens. Had <laughs> Yeah, it's happened. And, you know, just like I, you every time, you know, you do something and you maybe approach it in the way you wish you wouldn't have, you learn and it gets better the next time. But absolutely. I mean, having a network of people who understand what it is, you know, your day to day looks like and the experiences that you have. That's huge. You know, yeah. all of us coaches inside of the FLA movement, we meet every Friday um, for a call for about an hour. And we just touch base on, you know, each other's lives, what's going on. So we talk about everything and, you know, we're always in contact throughout the week. So it's, that's huge. That's super helpful. Do you ever talk about caffeine? <laughs> yes, we do. Isn't it weird though? I brought, we brought that up and you're and it, like you said, it was timing because that's oh, yeah. something that you've been talking about. Yeah. I've been trying to limit the amount of caffeine that I intake. Why would you do personally? something un-American like that? I don't understand. Um, I have been trying to navigate some of my own health stuff a little bit, I would say. And so just trying to look at the sources of stress in my life, whether it's, you know, in, in too much caffeine is, is stressful on the body to an extent. Mm -hmm. So that's where I'm at. Um, and every once in a while, I kind of just like to do a little <clears throat> caffeine detox so that I'm not dependent on it. How long? Okay, a couple of things. First of all, where, what's your source? <laughs> Look, you get, we're all giggly like Christmas. So, what's your source of caffeine? Are you an energy drink? Or are you a coffee person? Coffee, hundred percent. Thank you. Yeah. Do you put do you put like cream and stuff in your? No. That Sometimes is. I'll do um, almond milk and stevia, but I use stevia, and that's it. Yeah. Okay, so and how late do you drink coffee? Are you a morning person only? Because I'm the guy. I'm at that age now, to where every now and then I'll drink it at three o'clock in the afternoon, and then I'm this right here at eleven thirty at night because it it does keep me awake. You act like it doesn't. I get tired, but I don't get sleepy. Yep. I get drowsy and I get I get worn down, but I can't go to sleep. And I know that's from the caffeine. So yeah. do do you cut it off at a certain time? Yeah, I've over the years <clears throat> gotten pretty good about cutting it off. Usually. The latest I would try to ever have it is like 11 o'clock. Yeah. You no, know, it can turn down that slippery slope where you're having it, at, you know, later in the evening and then all of a sudden you're consuming it all day. And Yeah. And then you're dependent on it and look, okay. And so what's the longest now you can go without it? When do you, are you the type of person that goes, I'm not having coffee for 48 hours? Yeah. And then I'll <laughs> that use looked painful. That looked <laughs> like I'd kicked you in the shin. <laughs> like I can do it, but then I'll just be like, oh, I'll just have a coffee because, you know, it gives you that little extra like kick, yeah. even though I, I I really don't need it. See, I I go a, a day every now and then, like if you're going to go get test run at the doctor or that's I, I've got plenty of imposed, you know, fasting, coffee, fast, fastings, mm -hmm. <clears throat> but I get a headache. You did that on purpose to show you're drinking water and not coffee. I know. It's okay. It's okay. It's a little <laughs> virtual signal. We understand. But I I, um, I get headaches. If I go 24 hours, literally, I feel like I need to go to a clinic. I start getting the shakes. My head starts hurting. I yeah. can't focus. And it's not. that's not healthy. I know it's not healthy. Yeah. And I mean, that it happens. And that's where like going, you know. I, I'm a person <clears throat> like cold turkey. It's like I'm either going to – if I'm going to do a break from caffeine, I'm just not going to have any at all. All right. So I want to bring up one more thing um, yeah. about that, and then I want to I talk to you. I'm going to change the subject. I – just for a tip out there, I did not realize how many things had caffeine in them. So I started looking and I used to de drink these Lipton dot green teas, and I still do every now and then. But, I mean, I would drink two cases a week, four like water, four or five, six a day. Well, guess what they had in them? caffeine so when we were talking about are you drinking caffeine late at night no but i've had 37 of these today but now i drink water with you know some some flavor stuff in it because i just realized that i feel better drinking my coffee in the morning like a normal old man and then not drinking it the rest of the day yeah so look what's in the drinks you're drinking you'd be surprised how many things have caffeine in them uh do you fast only when I'm sleeping. Okay, but so 
<laughs> that's a little bit of a smart ass, and I like that. I appreciate it. But do you do the intermediate fasting? Because I've been trying to do the 15 hours, and I know you do the macros, so you guys have a different philosophy. But I've been trying to where I only eat for like eight hours a day. And I like the way it works, but I can squeeze my macros into it. Yeah. Do you do it to shorten that, like, eating window in the hopes of eating less? Is that... Yes, and kind of, but the other side is I found I was eating so late at night. Um, I was grazing. Mm -hmm. I found myself grazing because, you know, and, and we've talked about this before. Almonds are great for you unless you have 7,256 of them. And then there are extra calories because yeah. calories are calories and yeah. they can, they can be healthy, but if they're more than you're burning, it's not good. Yeah. No, so I found, I found myself grazing. And yeah, I was trying to eat a little less, but I found I'm very much, if I've got that eight hour window, I'm very much more conscious of what I'm putting into my body. Yeah. Does that make no, sense? Sure. Oh yeah, absolutely. I mean, I personally will try to cut off eating by like, you know, 637 because dinner's done. And then, you know, it, it discourages grazing because I don't really need snacks at night. You know, I'm going to bed. So that's helpful for me. I personally don't do any sort of like extending fast <clears throat> just because I personally find it to be a little bit too stressful on my body personally. Cause I mm -hmm. have like hormone stuff. And so, well, and, and yeah, I found that when, when I'm grazing, I'm either bored yeah. or I just need to go to bed. Yep. And I found that I'm not tired. Well, I've not turned the TV off. I've not turned my phone off. I really don't know if I'm not tired yet. I've not unplugged. I've not, done any quiet time. I've not done a workout. I mean, so I've found that I, I kept saying these things like I'm hungry. No, you're not. It's nine 30 at night. You just got to eating an hour and a half ago. You've not done anything to burn those calories off. You're either bored. So go do something or you're tired and you just won't unplug. You're like the little kid that won't shut their eyes at bedtime. That's what we all are. Is the older we get, we're just big giant kids. It's time to go to bed. I'm not going to bed. <laughs> yeah. I, I know that internal dialogue. <laughs> <laughs> and as soon as your head hits the pillow, everything you've thought about for the last six years comes into your brain. Every conversation that you should have said something different, you lay down and you go, well, I should have apologized about that. I that's, shouldn't have. that's so funny. I had that thought last night. <laughs> I was like, I should really apologize to my boyfriend for the way that I spoke to him when I was just really hungry. <laughs> <laughs> when you were hangry? Yeah. Hang so did you? Yeah. Oh, that a girl. Yeah. Because, you know, those things are only good if you actually do them. Oh, yeah. He was so excited, too. You know, I start the conversation. So I realized, and he's, like, waiting there. He's like, I knew I was going to get an apology. I just didn't know what it was for. That's <laughs> – oh, wait, let me check that off the list. Yeah, right? I'm like, oh, oh, that's, what do you mean? That's funny. That is funny. <laughs> That's the other thing. We, you know, we need to talk about coaching and relationships. That would be great. That's the other service you should start. Um, let's talk about what inspires you. Give me about another five to six minutes and I'll let you go. You know, a lot of times people will go to Instagram pages. They go watch, uh, chastity stuff. They'll go look at your stuff and they get inspiration or they'll follow the rock or Jocko Wilnick. Um, what do you, are you the type of person that draws motivation from other things, watching, listening, content people, or do you really not need that? No, I definitely do get motivation from that. Um, I mean, me for me personally, I guess more like inspiration, I guess, not motivation, if mm -hmm. that makes sense. Yeah. Yeah. So well, how do you define the difference? How do you define the difference? Motivation to me is something that is more like internal. So if I'm motivated, that's me personally, whereas something might inspire me. But motivation to me, I guess, is action and inspiration is what direction that action is going okay yeah. yeah yeah so where do you get your inspiration from um content i would say i consume a lot of content i am a serial podcast listener oh what are you listening to what kind so all health and nutrition and fitness no crime mindset no i i'm trying <clears throat> to oh, broaden my horizons to more of that realm of stuff in terms of like not always just reading nonfiction. Um, my boyfriend tries to get me to read fiction as much as possible. 
So, but podcasts, no, it's, it's all nutrition, health mindset. I'll give you one to look up. And I think I've told you this one before my buddy does one and it was in the Apple's top podcast for a while. Uh, the holistic navigator. And if you like health and fitness mm -hmm. from a holistic approach, I promise you his podcast is right up your alley. Okay. Yeah. I'm yeah. The holistic navigator. Um, and he owns a nutrition store for 40 years and, uh, he has a radio show. I think you would love it because he he talks about everything: mushrooms, CBD. Uh, he talks about diet, nutrition. He has a bunch of doctors on staff. I just think he 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 talks about it from a holistic approach to health and how it works with the medical field. Um, but it's interesting you listen to podcast. Do you what? Do you listen to podcasts when you're working out? Um. Are you a music person? Surely you listen to music. It depends. Typically in our gym, you know, if I'm working out, typically it's music, I would say. I work out on my own mostly, though, so I'm not in a class. So if they're <clears throat> playing in the gym, yes, if I'm by myself, I might put on a podcast, but I'll listen to them when I'm walking, um, when I may be doing stuff around the house. Okay. Cooking. What kind of music, though, do you listen to to get you going? You got to have something that if you really want some energy, are you, do you not, or is that not your thing? No, I mean, if, in a workout, yeah, if I'm, like, trying to get after it. But my workouts nowadays are much more, like, slower weightlifting. Like, the intensity is not really, like, super high. So, but are I, you, I – Are you going for weight? Are you going for are, – are you doing more powerlifting now? Or is it simply to maintain and to sculpt the body? Yeah, I'm doing more stuff to, like, change my body composition, I would say. Okay. Yeah. So, just real quick on that. What are you trying to go from to um, in your brain? I, yeah, I'm go trying to go from, I guess, just building more muscle and having more definition. So, like, for example, like the muscles in my back, like I want to be able to see more definition and the see those smaller muscles. The striations, um, yeah. Yeah, exactly. So that's kind of where my focus is right now. All right. <clears throat> Th that's kind of a really good lead in to – uh, what body part you hate to train the most and what body part you like to train, not exercise body part. Are you, do you like doing legs most? Do you like doing shoulders? What's the favorite one and the worst one? I like that question. I love doing legs. Absolutely. All day, every day, least amount. I would say, I mean, I don't know biceps. I know that's very specific, yeah. but like anytime my programming calls for like bicep curls, I skip them because homegirls already got like huge biceps and I'm like, I don't need, <laughs> I don't want bigger arms. So I skip it. Well, and a lot of times people, and you do it, but a lot of times people don't understand there's a lot of exercises that, inc that incorporate the bigger muscle groups where well, you're working your biceps anyway. If you're doing snatches or pulls yeah. or power cleans or even pull-ups, you're getting a bicep workout in there too. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> with that. All right. So you don't love biceps. You love working legs. So I could guess at your exercises, but I'll let you tell us what's your favorite exercise to do and your least favorite. And we'll take the bicep curl, I guess. What's the one that you don't look forward to, but you may be good at? So for instance, I've got buddies that were great at deadlifts, mm -hmm. but they hated deadlifts. Yeah. They just dreaded them. And I love deadlifts. Deadlift day was my, I was like, it's on. I loved it. Is there something that you dread like that? I hate doing hip thrusts because it takes a long time to set up. And I mean, I, I know they're extremely beneficial, but I just, whenever I see them programmed, I'm, I'm never excited. What's your favorite? Probably deadlifts. Oh, really? Yeah. Or Bulgarian split squats because they just always get you sore. See, now when I was young, we had deadlifts and some variations. We didn't have Bulgarian. I'm sure we had it. So what's a, tell me what that is, the Bulgarian hip. What is that? Tell me what that yeah. is. Bulgarian split squat. So it's a single leg. You have one leg up on the bench behind you. Oh, the, I've seen those. Yeah. And yeah. a wing like right here. So it's, a, I do a lot of bilateral stuff. So single leg, single arm. Um, which is nice because instead of doing a squat with both legs, like you're isolating that single leg. And so it just, you don't need a lot of weight in order to, for it to be really hard. Yeah. That would seem like it would be very challenging. What are the, what's the one you can do with the kettlebell when you like, it's the Russian or uh, the Turkish get up. Is that what it's called? Yeah. I did. I, I don't have kettlebells, but I've got some dumbbells here. So I, I can manipulate the way I hold them. 
And I don't think people understand. I did a workout with that um, four days ago. And, if, you know, originally I was going to do three sets of uh, 10. I was like, no, I'm not. I did two sets of 10, and then I went and did something else. Yeah. I was like, it kicked my ass. And I think I was doing them right, but I wasn't using that much weight. Yeah. I was so disappointed much. in myself. You know, there used to be, and I, I'm probably going to butcher this, but there was a rule back in, I forget which country it was, but weightlifters, you had to be able to – um, Turkish get up a hundred pounds on a barbell before you could like touch a barbell basically and do wow. any sort of weightlifting. So when you think about that, like knowing, you know, you just did them and it doesn't take much. That's yeah, no. pretty incredible. Yeah. Okay. I got a buddy of mine and he is a pro, he's an IFBB pro bodybuilder. And he told me he did this and I was going to try to do it, but I've, like I said, I'm, I've got joint issues and but we're, we're overcoming that slowly, but surely I'm 20 pounds down. We're coming over it. That's awesome. uh, but he did a mile of, uh, uh, my brain, my, I've gone brain dead. Um, not squat. When you step far now, lunges, he did lunges, a mile yeah. of lunges, a mile of lunges. Wow. Have you ever, I've never heard of that in my life. He goes, they measured it out and they said they did a mile, half a mile there and half a mile back to his gym. And he challenged, you know, I was like, I'm going to try to do that. Just so in case, Matt Davis, if you're watching, I'm really never going to try to do that. I feel like that sounds like something I would probably do. You know, granted, I've done like an hour straight of burpees, you know, because why not? Oh, have you really? Yeah. Well, you're, that's, that's communism. Why would you do that? That's, that's. <laughs> That's I, the the most I've ever done is like I said I did two or three sets of fifty mm -hmm. of burpees but that was you know when I was doing boxing two or three years ago and I love I used to love burpees now they kind of hurt me when I do them because I've stopped doing them uh, but I've had you know that buddy that does the holistic navigator he's done pull ups for an hour he's jumped rope for an hour wow yeah he used to hold up until about ten years ago twelve years ago he did he held the most pull ups in an hour. And I was there for when he broke that record at the nutrition store. So, but see that, are you goal oriented like that? Do you have a goal in mind now? Um, I mean, not like, it's not very specific. Yeah. So I have, I mean, when I think of my motivation to do things, there's usually a goal behind it, but Currently, right now, there's nothing specific that I'm chasing. If that are you, yeah, are you a hobby person? Do you go camping, hiking? Are you a Spartan race person? And then I'll wrap it up talking about groups. Do you like doing competitions like the Tough Mudder? Are you just a weekend warrior where you go hiking in the in the wild, wild you know woods with, with your boyfriend? Well, it's funny that you mentioned that. Speaking of timely, um, I'm not a big hiker. I don't love it. I would rather like trail run or go for a walk around anywhere else. <laughs> hiking is just not my jam. I just can't get into it. It's, and I don't mean to offend anyone who loves hiking, but to me, it's like we're not politically correct here. <laughs> to offend. me, it's like it's another dirt trail. Like I understand views are different. It's different when you're hiking to a place, but um, hiking is just not my jam. But, but trail running. I do love camping, so there's that. I am outdoorsy. <laughs> <laughs> Well, what part of the – uh-oh, you froze up on me. Are you still there? I'm here. Um, okay. My phone is close to dying. This is it. Real quick, tell okay. everybody, groups are forming yes. uh, with uh, the uh, Fearlessly Authentic Movement. Groups are forming right now. How do people find out more about that coaching from uh, Chastity and Fearlessly Authentic? Yes, so flamovement.com um, is our awesome website. You can find information on there. You can get um, connected through Chastity that way. Um, you can also find her on her Instagram um, or the FLA Movement um, Instagram as well. But she puts and I've out got the website down here too. Oh, perfect! Yeah, she puts out amazing content every single day. So she she's a source of knowledge. And you get some T-shirts and stuff too. Y'all got swag. Yes. You got some swag. Uh, I know your phone's about to die, and I know we had some technical issues at the very beginning, and I know you're super busy, so I appreciate you taking the time. Yeah, thank you. Thank you very much. Bye, Jen. Bye. Have a good see, night. See you, everybody.